Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of At Home, a, a chance I get uh, every week to talk to um, friends, colleagues, coworkers um, about what life during, you know, these crisis and these different, you know, this kind of just challenging time for everybody right now, what it's like to be at home, you know, during a pandemic and during some very other, you know, culturally challenging times for us. So today I'm actually joined by, by my friend, uh, Teresa Vigger. Teresa, how is it going? Hello, hello. It's going going great. I'm back. glad to be here. Glad to see a friendly face. Uh, so thanks for inviting me on. Totally. I know it's, it's, even though things have kind of, you're in San Francisco, right? Just North. So I'm in Sausalito. Oh, okay. Perfect. So I know it's, I know that like in various counties, I'm, I'm in the East Bay, Concord area. And I know that regular, like restrictions have kind of loosened up in different, like slightly different in different places, but it's yeah. still got to be pretty hard to like actually find time safely to be around friends and family. How have you, um, how have you figured out ways to do that? So, you know, I think a lot of us are working a ton um, and it's great, right? The, I'm super grateful to have my job. I think all of us who are working and are able to work remote are, uh, and we're really lucky to have all the collaboration tools to be able to do what we do and replicate our real life interactions as much as we can, right? Because I think many salespeople like myself love being in front of our customers, love being in front of our partners, because that's what we're good at, right, as people. So, um, but in terms of balancing it and making sure, you know, seeing family, seeing friends, seeing things like that, I will say the concept of like the Zoom social, thing and doing that with your family. I'm kind of burned out on Zoom, WebEx, Teams, Google Meet, whatever, you, you know, whatever you're using. It's kind of the last thing I want to do <laughs> at the end of the work day when I've been doing it for eight or nine hours straight. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine. I tried doing yeah. a couple of those for like, I think I did one for my family on Easter so that it brought the, like the iPad outside and we did a no. little Easter egg hunt in the front. And then my Aww. niece and Corona did the same thing. We're all on WebEx and it's, it's cool once or twice, but after all, you're like, this is a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And you're like, I kind of just want to not be on a, <laughs> on a device, any device, get the devices away from me. Um, yeah. So on that note, I've really, you know, I live alone. Uh, I have my dog here and she's amazing company, but um, there's no, there's no replacement for the in-person. Right. So yeah. I have like, and I'm very blessed to have a backyard. So have friends, family over, just hang out in the backyard, you know, plenty of distance away from one another, but it's really just nice to be able to hang out. Cause again, there's just, there's no replacement for that in-person interaction and picking up on cues and yeah. So that's been helpful. And uh, things are loosening up here in Marin County, which has been great. Some restaurants are now open for outdoor dining uh, some of the cafes and stuff. I was actually, I, just, uh, I had a little coffee meeting this morning uh, at Equator here in Sausalito. And it was, there are a lot of people out trying to do the same thing. And yeah. so that, that helps a lot here yeah. and there, but I will say it kind of saps your energy more. If you go do little social hangouts, because mm -hmm. we're not used to doing it as much. So get a little gassed. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can imagine uh, I've, we've done that a couple of times recently too. And it's almost, you inadvertently pour so much more energy into it. Oh, yeah. Because like, oh my gosh, a person. I get to talk <laughs> to a human being. That when you walk away, you're like, wow, that was exhausting. Like, it oh, wasn't yeah. this way before. But I, like, all of these things that you want to catch up on from like the last few months in person, like, fall in on you at one point. <laughs> that trying totally. to balance that doesn't really work. It really yeah. doesn't. <laughs> Have you found like, um, like, throughout like the course of your work days, I mean, now that you can get out, I mean, safely get out a little bit more often and there's distancing and stuff, but have you found that like you've been able during the days while you're working to get out of the house and go take walks and whatever, else, take your dog out, like just send things to not be in that chair all day long. I'm not very good at it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Cause like if I'm stuck here, I'm just going to crank through as much as I can. Um, but no, like during the day, I'll go out in the backyard if I have like a 30 minute block in between calls. Uh, I'll go try and get some sun. I know some people are like, why are you so tan? And I'm like, because I'm actually like getting to get outside more <laughs> instead of being in a car or in an office yeah. all day. Um, so that's been cool for my tan, but, <laughs> 
but I'm not as good about it as I should be. I, I should try to at least block like an hour at a time to go go on a run or go on a walk, go grab a yeah. sandwich or something to break up the day. But I'll admit I haven't been that good about it. I, you know what, I'll admit it too. I, I, as much as I've talked a lot about like to people I work with and friends and family about time management and all that jazz, it is so, so easy to be here and be like, oh, I'm just going to keep doing activities. And yeah. it's really easy to almost, almost like armchair quarterback yourself at the end of the day, like days over, take a walk and go, oh yeah, if I had, you know, if I really just took a couple, like, a little bit extra time, I could have taken a walk and did some really deep work at that time. But then in the middle of the day, you're like, but I'm just sitting here and I could just keep hitting the keyboard over and over again yeah. my face and things will happen. And it'll be great. But yeah. I'll set up more meetings and I'll get organized and I'll send out all this stuff that I need to get done. And, and then you look at the clock and it's like six 30 and you're like, Oh my God. <laughs> what the heck did I just do? Yeah. Why? <laughs> was, there was somebody, uh, I forget who it was, somebody on the East coast at Cisco um, back when COVID kind of first kicked off who had sent like a big message to um all of his people within his sales organization with some tips of like, Hey, now that you're at home all the time, here's some things to do or not to do. And one of them was like, you can work a 16 hour day. So don't do it. And I, I thought it was one really good that a leader would be willing to say that out loud, but also it reminded me personally, I mean, me talking to the guys on my team, but also for myself, like it's really easy to sit here and, and do stuff all day, but it's totally, it's hard to sit back and kind of go, you know, I grab my day. I, I actually do handwrite a day planner, like grab yeah. my day planner and write down, like, here are three priorities that I am going to get done today. And like, realize that if you were just focused on being a little bit more productive and hit those priorities, you actually feel better at the end of the day. Cause you don't feel like I have to like stare at a screen all day. Cause you'll be busy and you'll check off all those tasks on your list For or whatever. Sure. But how much did you really get done in that day? To be honest. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're, you're spot on. And I, uh, so I have a couple reps on my team and like, so I, there's been a certain point where, you know, it's a gorgeous day outside 80 degrees it's summer uh you know and i've told them like look if you get your you know your major meetings out of the way your customers have what they need for the day go like take the afternoon off go do something go if you want to go get out on the water go for a paddle board go do whatever you're gonna do go do it and don't feel bad like i, like, I know i, I should like be that. telling you this because i'm your boss but like <laughs> Honestly, I need y'all to stay sane and happy and like yes. feel good. I totally agree with that. You know, it's, I had this, I had this conversation or something very similar to it with somebody the other day. And I, I casually made the joke that like, ex it wasn't that example, but exactly what you're talking about. And like, yeah. you still have a job to do. So like, you can't like neglect your job, obviously, yeah. but you can arrange your time so that like, it's, if time is still going to happen in an hour or two, and you still have two meetings this afternoon, but you've got an hour between now and then that you could just stare at a screen or you go for a you know 20 minute pallet board or a walk around the block, go totally. do that. Just, or take a nap. I mean, whatever, just yeah. something to just recoup for a few minutes because you'll be so much better off in the, in the later in the day. It's good to hear you say that because I, I've uh, several of the people who've been on this show in the past couple months who are in people leadership roles have said very similar things, but it does, it, which is starting to make me feel good that many other people leaders feel the same way, but totally. it, I've heard language from people that I don't directly work with that makes it makes me feel like we are kind of in the minority, which I think is unfortunate. I hope I'm wrong, but I know it does kind of worry because I've heard words like um, I, I'm afraid if I say one of these words, someone will know people know who I'm talking about. But like the words like um, key, momentum is the only one I can think of. I heard it. I've heard it said a few times, like like we've totally. got to do things, but we got to keep up momentum. And I, it worries me a bit that it sets a tone to your point with, with your employees that even though we may say something like take it, take the, a couple hours off to go do something, but still keep this makes you feel like they don't actually really mean the first thing they said. Right. Oh, anytime you insert the word, but <laughs> it, it, it totally drags from your initial statement. Like that's just the I'm, unfortunate. I have, I have heard that before. I'm glad you said that. And it wasn't just me who said that because I think more and more people need to realize that when they say things like that, especially in roles like you and I are in, if you say something and then say, but, you have negated everything you said before. Like people were just going to hear what you said after that. Yep. No, you're totally right. And it's actually in like therapy books and things like that around oh, really? psychology. It's, yeah. it's <laughs> if you're it's trying to thing. have an effective conversation with someone or an effective argument, because you're allowed to argue, mm -hmm. if you use the word, but you're completely discrediting what the other person's saying. 
Oh, interesting. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. Well, you know, and it, it I, especially these days, I mean, we won't get into the heavier stuff necessarily today, but I, like, yeah. especially these days, we're with everything happening in, in our culture right now, all the stuff that's going on in the news, it reminds you so much how much, I mean, not to focus on that, but folk, you know, how much words are important and we don't oh, yeah. think about it. Like I've been starting to research a little bit more of the idea of like microaggressions, but I, I don't think that's this. I think this is, it's something similar though. It's these words that we use that we just don't think about, but they have such a strong impact on what people hear from you, whether absolutely. you intend it or not. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I know a lot about that. Um, yeah. And then just back to the point of, of trying to keep that balance. Right. Cause I've also talked to some friends of mine who, you know, I think are experiencing a little bit of burnout because now there isn't, there's, because nobody's going on trips, nobody's, you know, going and taking not necessarily like a three or four day weekend, but go and work from somewhere else mm -hmm. with, you know, with a trip that you're doing or whatever. Um, I think it's important to break up the monotony too. And, you know, take a day off if you need a day off and not to be ashamed if you need a mental health day. Um, there's absolutely no shame in it whatsoever. And, I think that's really important for people to feel comfortable talking to their managers about or whoever about like, I'm not in a good space mentally. I need some, here's what I need to, to get back on track. And that might be taking a little break from work too, just because it is, it is a lot. Yeah, to it, it totally is. And I, I don't, I think this is, um, I actually heard this from somebody a couple days ago, making a joke that realizing, you know, I realized I've got more PTO saved up right now than I've ever had before. And it made me laugh at first. And then I realized that's actually not that funny. Like you have a lot of PTO. Maybe you should be taking some more time. All of us, not just that person, but like I looked at my PTO a couple days ago just because I was curious. I'm like, maybe I should take some time off because I clearly have not, if I have that much, I clearly have not in a long time. Like that's probably not a good thing. And yeah. I remember, I can remember when I was younger, um, I worked at a pretty big company in my first career. And I remember there was a lot of people that I worked with that, um, would take vacations and week-long trips, whatever. And I used to always like, how do you do that? Like, how do you just not stress about those things? Now, fast forward to you know, years later, I'm starting to realize not taking vacations has actually been a huge strain on my family because we're just not taking time off and we can't yeah. totally have the ability yeah. to do it. I know. Well, and then when you're on vacation to make sure you actually <laughs> okay, unplug. Yeah, that too. Because <laughs> that's what I'm guilty of. I like, I'm, I'm really good at planning vacations and going on them, but and then I'm toting my little laptop a lot around everywhere and just like on the phone. I'm like, why did I come this far to oh, man. just keep I working? <laughs> we, um, we've been trying to take like little um, picnic breaks, whatever. So we live, you know, in Concord and we, we've been trying to go to like to Martinez, which is just yeah. for anyone who's watching the show. It's kind of like on the, on not the bay, but kind of an offshoot of the bay and pull up the little SUV on the back and just open up the hatch and do a little picnic in the back. Let the kid yeah. run around for a little bit. No one's around, get there early in the morning we started realizing it'd be nice to go like have a camper or something or like go not, I don't mean long distances, but like go into the Delta someplace here in the Bay area, half an hour from the house and just yeah. not be at home for a weekend, just be someplace else for a weekend. And I found myself, we tried to do that this weekend. I found myself immediately saying, I'm going to go grab, Oh, there's real quick. I'll just go grab my iPad. And I'm like, wait, hold on. Why do I need this? Like the laptop can stay here. Why do I need to take this? I'm like, no, no. Yep. Just, just take the phone. <laughs> Just gonna take the phone. That's all I need. I don't need to look at email. I don't need an excuse to sit there and stare at something all day long. Yeah. And it turned out so good. But uh, one question I've been asking sort of everybody who's been on the show is, and you kind of answered it a little bit now, but I'll give you a chance to kind of like um, chime in on something specific if you want is, and I, everyone has heard this story a bunch of times, but I'll keep it short, is I heard recently uh, a comparison between the, the term work-life balance and um, work-life rhythm. And the person was kind of mm. describing that, like, you can't really ever have a balance because if you think of balance, it's the tendency we have is to think of it in short term, like to balancing my work life today or tomorrow or whatever. And then you find yourself feeling guilty that, well, I worked for two hours, so I can do this for two hours, but I have to like find some, and you, you can't do that. Like it doesn't really work to balance. Yeah. You have to look at things over like a week to two weeks to a month or what have you. And so his analogy was more of like, or the metaphor he used was a rhythm where you're going to have like some days where you just are slammed all day and then other days where it feels less so, but at the end of it, you end up getting where you need to be kind of like a sheet of music. It, it creates a harmony yeah. when it's all done. If you look at it over a chunk of time. Yep. And so the, I guess the question I, I want to ask you is if you could pick sort of one activity or tool or just whatever that you've started doing since we've all had to be at home more that has helped you with kind of creating some semblance of that rhythm, what would that be? Oh, so how do I develop 
that type of rhythm. Um, Anything. Doesn't matter how big or small it is. Yeah. You know, I just, I think it goes to the point that you just brought up, right, is, is actually having awareness. As simple as it sounds, mm-hmm. um, being aware and then responding to how your schedule is working out, right? Because you're totally right. Some days, literally on calls, video from like 7 a.m. And then magically at 7 p.m., because I've had all those calls all day. Now I'm trying to catch up on everything I had to do as a result of all those calls. Um, And just realizing, like looking at your calendar as again, as simple and stupid as it sounds and just mentally preparing like, cool, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday are stacked. I'm going to do myself a favor on Thursday and I am not gonna book meetings for the afternoon of the Thursday so I can catch up on everything I need to do and then maybe be done by four and go do something I want to do that isn't work related. <laughs> and I, then on Friday, not, not book Friday. So I can follow up with all the catch up mm-hmm. from there. If meetings need to get booked, you know, sparse them out. But again, I don't want to burn out. So really try to like, if I have three crazy days, have one medium busy and one not as booked. For sure. And that, that's been helpful. Um, now, sometimes we're not in complete control of that, right? <laughs> we yes. all, we're, we're all at the mercy of our, of our customers. And, uh, but I, I think it all just starts with awareness and making sure to plan out, you know, maybe the next week, have it be the opposite, maybe three less busy days and two really busy days as much as you can control it. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, yeah, yeah I, I do like the term rhythm a little bit more than balance because I think you're right I think it's crazy to try and match like for like yeah I, you know, working. I like the the kind of message I took from what you just said is I, and I've heard this before is sort of giving yourself permission to be okay with taking you know not taking a half day off but like owning your time for that for that half day yeah. or whatever full day whatever it is to realize that I'm gonna have to be busy these days there's stuff that has to get done these meetings have to happen for Monday Tuesday Wednesday or whatever Stuff has you know, audio stuff going on. <laughs> um, oh. It's something. Oh, you're okay. This stuff has to happen, and I'm just gonna have to deal with this. But on this other day, I can control my schedule that day. Nothing is booked. I'm gonna prevent something from getting booked, and you know, still be able to say yes to somebody. But like, yes, on a different day, we'll we'll meet this other day instead, totally. and use that for the things you need to get done, so that you don't feel as like time crunched and and weighed down by it. Which I think all of us need to remember often, which is you. It's okay to give yourself permission to take that time for yourself. You need to, because if you don't, it's going to be exactly what you described. You're, you're going, your, your schedule will run away from you and you're just going to feel stressed all the time. Or, yeah. And then the recovery is tough, right? Because then all you do is make dinner, go to bed, wake up yes. and start all over again. Yep. And that's where I think people start getting really antsy and really stressed and Absolutely. really down. And it, yeah, it's tough. Absolutely. Well, Teresa, thank you so much for joining. I really appreciate it. It's been awesome to catch yeah. up with you. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Great to see your face. And I'm glad you're doing this. Yeah, you too. Well, everyone, thank you so much for joining. I really appreciate another episode of At Home. And if you like the show, I'd love a like on the video, the little thumbs up here right down below. It really helps out the video. It helps out the channel. If you want to keep up with any new videos that I'm doing, click on the subscribe button down here somewhere-ish on whichever side it is. Um, You'll get notifications for the future. I've got more videos coming out here soon, not just the at-home series, but other things on my channel. So I love that. And I always love to hear from everybody. Put comments in the comments below. This will be posted on LinkedIn as well. And you can follow up there with any comments or dialogue. As always, thank you again and have a great afternoon. Bye guys.